So without further ado, I'm going to pass to Sarah to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, thank you all for being here. We're super excited um, to have a couple of amazing ed tech rock stars with us uh, to present for you. So uh, first up, we have Eric Kurtz. He is a tech integrationist, a writer, Google certified trainer and innovator, a blogger, control out achieve and a moat expert. Uh, I met Eric through our Google uh, trainer group. I think there's 8,600 of us. So um, it was fun to make that connection. And um, we are uh, grateful to have Eric here. And Brian Lopez, who's from the West Coast with us from LA County, LA County. And I first met Eric, I mean, <laughs> Brian at Spring Q. He did an amazing presentation in Palm, Palm Springs last year. He is an ELD and intervention teacher using a, a FLIP, formerly known as Flipgrid, for his multilingual learners. He's a future admin and also a board member of the San Gabriel Valley Q. So um, we're excited. Again, thank you both for being here. And I think we'll uh, start with Eric and Moat. All right. Well, hey, I'm so excited to be with you guys here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and give me just a moment to pull that up, if that's okay to do so now. Sound yes. good? All right. Let me go ahead and uh, and share my screen. There we go. Awesome. Excellent. So uh, thanks so much for having me. And also we're doing 25 minutes for each of these, correct? So I'm going to hit my timer here so I can uh, monitor myself. <laughs> you guys can yell at me too <laughs> if we get close. Uh, so thanks so much for letting me be here tonight. Uh, really excited to be with you guys. Uh, I'm going to be chatting about Moat, a little bit of housekeeping before we dive into that. Uh, you should see a link uh, that I'm sharing um, on my uh, on my intro slide here. Uh, I would encourage you to follow that bit.ly link and I can drop it into the chat as well. Here, I'll open up the chat so that I can pop it in there. Uh, there we go. It's uh, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat. That link is going to take you to a Google document. And that Google document has all the resources, uh, more than we're going to get to in the time we have together here. But that's what I'm going to pull them from. And then later on, when you get a chance to play around with these yourself. There's a lot of great stuff in there you can use as a, as a launching board to try out things. So what that should look like is a document like this. And so if that's what you're getting into, marvelous moat activities for schools, then you are in the right place. Again, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat. Uh, and you are certainly welcome to make a copy of that document if you want. You can bookmark it, add it to your drive, whatever works best for you. At the top of that document, if you ever need to get in touch with me, all my contact info is up there. My blog, Control All to Chief, email, Twitter, YouTube, my email, my email newsletter, my email discussion group, whatever works for you, however you would like to connect. Uh, I've got all that available there at the top for you. What we're going to do, though, with the time that I have, is I'm going to do a quick introduction to what Moat is. Uh, some folks may be more familiar with it than others, but I want to make sure everybody has at least a, a good understanding of what Moat's all about, how you can install it if you need to uh, do that if you haven't done so already. But then really the majority of the time is we're going to look at using Moat in for tonight, I'm just going to hit three areas, docs, slides, and forms. You can also, you can pretty much use it in just about anything, uh, but those are the ones I've, I've picked a couple examples out of each of those that I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you. So that's the plan. Again, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat to follow along with those items there. All right. And I will do my best to keep an eye on the chat. I've got it up in another window here. If people do have questions, please let me know. Absolutely happy to take any questions, comments throughout this as well, so that we can personalize this for you and your interests. All right. So first thing first, let's get back into this. And what is Moat? <laughs> so uh, Moat is a Chrome extension 
uh, that allows you to record your voice. I mean, that's a basic what, what it is. Uh, you record your voice and then you can add your voice, that voice recording to all kinds of things. You can put it in docs and slides and forms and classroom and Gmail and all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's also the ability to view your engagement details to see who's interacting with those. There are free features and there are premium features. The premium features also include things like transcription, translation, and so forth. Now, I'll be demonstrating from the premium version here tonight. That's the one I've got here. Um, but the, the main difference between those is that with the free version, uh, you're just more limited in how many moats you can record. It limits it to 20 recordings per month, whereas the paid version is an unlimited amount of recordings. Either way, you have a five-minute uh, limit per recordings. That's pretty pretty good. You get a lot of uh, uh, time for those recordings that you do. Uh, but again, with the paid one, you do pick up a couple of other things like the translation and transcription and some things like that as well. Of course, they've got school wide versions too. So just want to always be you know uh, upfront and let you know how all that looks. Uh, definitely, you can uh, make a lot of great use out of the free version as well. Now, if you don't have Moot and you want to try it out, I do have a link in that agenda document to install moat. We're not going to actually, I've already got it installed. If I come up here and click, you'll see there is my moat extension already installed up there. But if you haven't, uh, as you're going down through the agenda here, I do have a section here on installation on page three. There's a link to the Chrome web store where if you needed to, you could go out and install that Chrome extension for moat. Um, I've already got it installed on mine, but that's where you could go to do it. Of course, as always, check with your tech folks if it's something that needs to get approved, uh, you, you may always, you know, may need to check with them as well. But that's pretty much the idea. After you get it installed, you can uh, sign in and don't forget to pin it <laughs> uh, so that you can always see the extension. Remember, if you click on the little puzzle piece up here, you can decide which extensions you want to have pinned. That keeps it nice and handy so you can get to it anytime you need it. So with that in mind, let's talk about what we can do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with using Google Docs and show you a couple examples in that. Then we'll hit some with slides and forms as well. If you're following along in the document, all of these examples are in here. So if you want to try these out yourself now or later, I have templates that you can click on to get the exact same documents that I'm using or the same slideshows. If you want to take some of these for a spin yourself as well. But for the first one, I'm going to start off with one of the most basic uses of Moat, which is leaving verbal feedback in a document. So let's say this is not a real student uh, writing assignment. This is just a pretend one that I put together with some intentional errors in it. Let's say I wanted to provide some feedback to my student, like they've got some issues here with spelling. And so maybe I want to come in here and select this word that is misspelled. Now, if I come over here to my comment box, my comment button to add a comment, that's normal. There's nothing unusual about that. In a Google Doc, you can type in a comment perfectly fine. Well, notice because I've got the moat extension installed, I also have a little moat icon inside of my comment box. And you're going to notice this popping up in all kinds of places once you get it installed, which means, oh, sure, I could type in a note if I want, but instead, I can just record it. And so that's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to keep this really simple for this example, but let's try this out. Watch out for spelling errors. Now, Obviously, I would write much, I'd say much more <laughs> than, than that normally, just doing a quick, simple one so you can see the idea behind it. Um, and I may have lost my, my watch there, but let's see if we can. Um, now, I'm going to make sure, I hope I shared my, let me double check I shared my audio. I can't remember if I shared my audio or not here. Let's see. Is that coming through? Let's make sure it does. If not, I may need to share my audio. I want to make sure that I have done that. Oh, I, mean, I did not. I did not share my audio, but now I think I have. So hopefully that will come through okay for you guys now. Out for spelling errors. And it, I kind of missed the first little bit of it there. So I might, re I could re-record that if I wasn't happy with that. Let's try that again. We'll just hit mode here. Watch out for spelling errors. There we go. And then we'll comment. And you'll notice that here is that recording. 
watch out for spelling errors. Hopefully that's coming through now and you guys can hear that. Awesome. Um, and so if a student was now to come and open up their document, they would be able to say, oh, Mr. Kurtz left me a comment and they'd be able to play that and listen to that. Now, what if the student doesn't have moat? Now, if they have moat, it's going to look just like this. They're going to click the button. It's going to play. If they don't have moat, I can show you what that looks like. Let me go ahead and I will take this link and I'll open it up in an incognito window so we can see it with an account that does not have, you know, moat active. So in a case like this, if I were to come across this and I don't have moat installed, give this a moment to load up here, you'll see that it shows us just a link instead, but they could still click on that link. And when they do, that'll open up in a new tab. And in that new tab, they would be able to then play it watch out for spelling errors. So that would uh, be available to them even if they don't have a mode installed, just one extra click that they have in there. Now notice it also did transcribe what I said. That's an option. You don't have to have that on. If I click on my little moat icon up here, I can choose where it says settings. I can choose to enable voice to text or not. So that, that's an option. You don't have to have it transcribe your text as well. There's also a translate option there. So if I knew that the student who is going to be listening to this may speak another language, I could choose to translate the text that was generated from it. So I could say, let's take this. So let's translate this, for example, into Spanish. And now if I give that a moment to do that, the audio, of course, is going to stay the same, but the uh, the text itself will get trained. There we go. The text itself has been translated, which is nice. Now, the students can do the same. If they have the mode extension installed, they will have the translate button uh, with, the, with the full version, and they can translate any of those as well that they see. Now, this is kind of how Moat began its life. This was the beginning of it. It was leaving comments in a Google Doc. That's pretty much how it started. Now, a whole lot more has happened to it since then. So let's keep upping the ante here and see what else we could do with a tool like this. So another thing would be, how about embedding audio directions into a document? So let's say I'm going to send out this Landforms hyperdoc to my students, and I want them to complete this. But before I do, I want to embed some audio directions. So instead of just reading them, they could hear me speaking them as well. Well, if I come in here and I say, let's highlight the words audio directions directions. This time, I'm not going to hit the comment button. I'm going to hit the button above it, which is to add a hyper moat. You'll only see that button if you have moat installed. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to read the directions here. Move this out of the way so I can see the directions because I won't remember what they are. <laughs> All right. Watch the video below for an introduction to different types of landforms. Double click on the video to open it and then double click it again to play the video. And we can insert that. And now this is now a hyper mode, meaning that if somebody comes here, they click on the audio directions, they could then play that. Watch the video below for and they would be able to uh, get those uh, directions read to them in my own voice. Again, those could be translated as well there. Now, in both of these cases, I'm the one who's been doing the recording, which that's great. That's fantastic. But our students can take advantage of this as well. So let's try it from a different perspective. What if I was wanting to do some uh, some fluency work? Now, this is these are old examples I've created before, so I didn't adjust these for tonight. Uh, so it could you could do a lot of different things with this. But for this example, I was saying that, you know, maybe I'm trying to learn German, you know, and so I uh, how do we get a why in there. Sorry about that. I hit uh, hit my button a few too many times there. Uh, so uh, in this case, we're trying to learn some uh, some German. And the idea is this would be a document that I could push out to my students. And then what they would do is they would follow the directions here to add their own hypermotes in here. So let's say they need to practice reading here. So they'll do what it says. They will select the, uh, the text. They'll click on the hypermote button and they'll practice saying this. Guten Morgen. And they can listen to make sure they like it. Guten Morgen. Yeah, it sounds good. Hit insert. And now when they turn this back into me, when I get it turned back into me, I can now click down through here and I can play each of theirs. 
Guten Morgan, and I can grade them on how well their fluency was. Now, this is a great way for a student to practice until they are happy with what it is they are submitting there. Uh, and it could be, you know, they could be an English learner, so it could be English phrases that they are, you know, adding their recording next to an entire sentence. Maybe it's not just a phrase, but you're having them read sentence after sentence after sentence, and they're going through and doing that. Excellent. Um, did see a question pop up saying um, that um, many of the young students don't read well enough in their first language to utilize the translation. Does Moat translate the audio? There is no translation to the audio. It is only a translation of the, the text if you choose to have the speech to text option in there. So yeah, it is, it is own, but good question. Appreciate your asking that. So those are just a couple of quick ideas in docs. We can obviously do more than that, but let's switch it up. Let's take a look at some other tools here. How about we jump over to slides? So in Google Slides, Moat, of course, I could use to add a comment. So, you know, that would certainly be fine. I could always just click insert comment and as normal, we could do exactly what we did in Google Docs. I could record myself leaving a comment on a slide, which is fantastic. Great way to leave feedback on individual slides. But another neat thing is Google Slides allows audio to be embedded in the slide, and Moat really plays along nicely with that. So in this case, this was a uh, activity I did a while back where we were learning about long and short vowel sounds. And so in this case, what we have are a bunch of pieces of clip art and then two boxes here, short a and long A. And the idea is to drag and drop these images into the correct box. Well, what I've done is simply use Moat to record my voice and insert that in here. Now I'm doing two different things. On one hand, I'm doing this for directions. On the other hand, I'm doing it for the audio activity itself. So for example, if I click here for the directions, drag the pictures here that use the short A sound. The short A sound goes ah. And then over here, I do the same thing for the clip art images. Rain. Hat. Now, I just so you know, I had to record all of those twice because the first time I recorded it, I shared it with a friend and said, hey, do you think this activity sounds okay? Is it working right? And they said, you know, you know, words like hat and rain, they don't have two syllables. I guess I'm still showing some of my, I'm from Florida originally, it was more like rain and dog and all these things. So I had to re-record all of them and be like, dog, rain, cat. And I just had to stop myself from throwing in that extra syllable I like to put in there somewhere in the middle of things. Um, so with Moat in a slideshow, it's really super simple to be able to do this. All I have to do is instead of clicking the extension for Moat, there's actually another Moat button up at the top of Google Slides. If you give a click on that, I can simply click here and I'll just do a just testing so you can see. Just testing. This is just a test. I can make sure it sounds okay. Just testing. This is just a test. And if I like it, I can hit insert. Now what it's doing is it's taking that audio, it is saving it to my Google Drive, it's sharing it, and then it's embedding it into the slideshow. It does all of that work for you. And boom, just there it testing. Is. This is just a test. Super, super simple to be able to do that. So I love that. Awesome. Now, um, Another fun twist on this, <laughs> this is one that I actually did a Moat uh, webinar on, and I believe if you want to get the full details on this one, I believe I linked that in in our document as well. This would be on the section on slides, and I believe we're down to example four, yes. So we're talking about creating a class soundboard. There is a 30-minute webinar I did on this for MoatCon, as well as a lot of other resources if you want to go deeper into that, page six of the agenda document. The idea behind this is if we can record our voice and drop it into a slideshow, we could make a soundboard out of that. Now, usually when I talk about this, I I'm using it more for the idea of like we're playing a game in class. Um, but you could do a lot of things with it. So like in this case, I've recorded my voice up at the top here. Good job. Woohoo. It's only me clapping, but I still feel it makes me a little happy there. Hopefully nobody here tonight is <sighs> doing that or I'll be very sad. Wah, wah, wah. And of course, I also just threw in some actual recordings like the uh, ever popular air horn. <laughs> Now, 
in my example here, uh, I was thinking more like you know, maybe a, a class game or something, but this could also be for if you're reading a story and you want to add some sound effects while you're reading, it could be used for class transitions. But I was thinking, well, what if it's for an English language learner? This would be a fantastic way for people to practice um, a vocabulary. You could make sound boards with key vocab terms. The student could say it, click it, listen, say it again. And this would be a neat way to have a quick sound board of words that they are trying to learn. Oh, somebody said, will you share the slideshow? Yes, everything Everything is shared. <laughs> it's it's all in here. Again, if you missed that initially, uh, make sure you guys know that. Again, it's bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat. I share everything under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. Uh, basically, it's free to use any way you want. You can copy all my stuff. All I ask is uh, just leave a link back to me from where you got it and don't charge for it. I give it away free. You pass it on free as well. So yes, everything's in there. If you go into that uh, agenda document, you can get a copy of that uh, slideshow there as well. So it's all all in there for you. Absolutely. So let's go one step further now. This will be the last example that I show, and that's Google Forms. Now with Google Forms, we can use Moat as well. In this case, I've got a very simple form, nothing fancy here. I just want to show you a couple of ideas. One could be, what if I want students to type in a form, like maybe like a spelling word? Well, the problem is I can't like have the word there and say, spell this word because it's going to be there. But I could record myself saying the word and then that they could listen to and then spell it. Now, of course, I'm going to want to go up to mode here and I'm going to want to say, let's not have the, the text or the, the voice to text <laughs> because I don't want it to show the word. So I will turn off the voice to text. I don't want it to have the transcript for that one. But in this one, I say, you know, spell the word in the recording below. Well, I can click the little moat button here dinosaur. And there we go. Let's see. Hopefully that uh, we'll go preview that and make sure I wasn't talking over myself there. Uh, give it a moment. It's still doing its thing. There we go. Dinosaur. Yeah, I, I was talking over myself, but that's okay. Dinosaur. <laughs> I, I had a feeling I might have been doing that. I'll do that one one more time. Uh, I got myself a little carried away. Dinosaur. There we go. Okay. And so now when they go to take the test, they'll be able to click it, listen to it, and then type in the answer. I could also do the same thing if I was going to be doing this with a multiple choice thing, like choose the correct pronunciation for I am a man. So I could come here. And for this, what I would do is I would use what's called the moat pad up here in the extension. I would click here to record a voice note. So I could do some incorrect and some correct. So for example, let's do the right one. Ich bin ein Mann. It's going to copy that. I could come in and maybe say, maybe that's choice two. And I could put that one in. And then I could do it, you know, incorrectly for, you know, some of the other ones. Maybe come up here and do something like, uh, Sie sind ein Mann. And then that I could come in and I could put that in as well. You get the idea. So now when the student goes to take this quiz, we've got a lot of audio embedded right in it. So here, spell the word dinosaur. They're going to get the word and then they can spell it. And then here, choose the correct pronunciation. Sie sind ein Mann. Ich bin ein Mann. So we come in and we'll do dinosaur and we'll say option two was right. But then look at this. How about having the students record themselves in the quiz? Yes. In this case, we're saying introduce yourself and say your name in French. Instead of typing it in, if they've got Moat installed, they can record themselves right in the form and submit that as part of the quiz. So let's try that. Bonjour, je m'appelle Eric. And it's recording me. And now if I submit that, I'll pop back over to the quiz itself, go to our responses here. That should be coming in. It may take it just a moment. Oh, I forgot about my, it wants my email address. I forgot about that. We'll just put in my regular email address there. I wonder why that wasn't going through. There we go. Okay. All right. We'll pop back over here. So now if I go to my responses, 
what I can do, of course, I can see the responses here, but what's really great is if I go to the linked sheet, if I say, let's link a spreadsheet to this. So if I say, let's go ahead and create a Google spreadsheet linked to the responses, I can play those moat recordings right from that Google spreadsheet. So as I go down the list here, you'll see for each of these recordings, I can come and give it a moment to load in there. If I click on that recording, it will open up right for me there and I can see how my student did. Bonjour, je m'appelle Adric. And awesome, and now I can come back over and decide how I wanna grade that. So nice to have all of those uses. And again, we're not hitting everything. There's other things we can do with it as well. So we've talked about some uses in docs. We've talked about some slide uses. Uh, we've also talked about forms. It works great in classroom as well. You can insert it there. You can also do this with Gmail, really pretty much any place <laughs> that you can, you know, insert a link, you can take a uh, moat recording and put it in there. Now, uh, I'm getting really close to the end of my time. And so the things that I want to let you guys know as we start to wrap up is if you want to try out any of these examples or others that we didn't even get to, please feel free to pull up this document and then you can use the links in here if you want to say, oh, I'm going to make a copy of that form and I'm going to try it myself or make a copy of that slideshow and try it myself. But there's also a wonderful resource from Moat themselves, and that's right on page two under my general resources. So at the top of page two under general resources, let me highlight it just so it pops out to everybody. Probably should do a, uh, a light purple highlighting because it's moat. Everything's purple with them. They have a lot of support on their website. On their website, they have a section called their learning zone. And so moat.com slash learning dash zone. Um, if I go out to that, that's going to be a page on the moat site where they have just loads and loads and loads of great resources. Some of these are videos that you can watch, but then other ones here are actually slideshows you can make copies of or other documents you can make copies of to try these things out yourself. And so there's no, you know, no lack of possibilities here to explore. And I will go ahead and I'll uh, drop that in the chat too, uh, just for convenience, but it is there on page two of the resource document. Uh, so uh, if there are any last minute questions that uh, we can still fit in during this time, I'm happy to take them, but I think I am just about at the end of my 25 minutes. Let me know if there's anything there that I missed in the chat that I should address. Seeing a lot of people saying that looks great. Thank yes. you, Eric. So many, so many light bulbs going off, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Eric. Um, Brian, our flip rock star is up next. And I, I just wanted to remind everybody, even if you don't work with multilingual learners in your classroom, just be thinking of any, any of these, both moat and flip work, uh, for any content area. So just be thinking of ways that you can use them in your classroom or at your districts. Um, so some some really great ideas. So uh, Brian, we are looking forward to hearing how you use Flip in your classroom. Me too. <laughs> here we go. All right, let's hope everything works here. And let's see. Oh, I'm going to put my bit.ly in the chat to get started. Let me see how we do this. And I will start here. So fun fact, uh, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear? I mean, I probably can't see you. But um, okay, so I'm gonna get started. The session resources are here. I have the bit.ly there and the bit.ly is also in the chat. Um, one thing I learned from remote learning is I don't listen to the chat. So I don't mean, if I don't respond because I'm not paying attention, it's just that uh, during my time with remote learning, I worked with, with um, newcomer students that did not speak English. So I wanted them to speak. So that's why I turn off the chat and I want them to speak. So, if you're asking me a question or you're saying great, <laughs> I, I apologize if I don't see it. So when you go here to this to the session resources, it will take you to this wakelet. Um, the the uh, and if you click on here where it says 
Google, it will give you a copy of my resources that I have. Uh, this is a fun activity for us to do later, maybe during during the breakout rooms or, or at your own time. And then you can just sign up here if you are not a flip, uh, if you're not familiar with flip. Uh, for this one here, you don't, you don't, uh, you do not need an account. You can just uh, uh, click it and sign in with your um, email address to participate. And I have some more things here if you like, if you would like to read about my adventures. So with that said, I will start and let's see where we go. So this is using Flip to support multilingual, multilingual learners. And as someone just said, this is not specifically just for one type of learner because we, uh, we are all multilingual learners of, of, of many different things. So um, my goal is to plant, uh, plant an idea and, and watch it grow. So my name is Brian Lopez. I am from Southern California, USA. This is my sixth year teaching ELD and intervention. I work with, with, with TK through sixth grade for about 45 minutes per day. And I am, I am an ambassador for the following that you see here. And I do have my administrative cred credential as it was shown. And with that, we will go on. So the goal that, that I do is like, we learn English using ed tech. So um, ed tech is a tool to help us learn just as a piece of, piece of paper and a pencil are tools to help us learn. So with this, I will have a, uh, an, an emphasis on using flip, I did not start my timer, so if someone can like call me out on it when it's when it's when there's like one one one, one minute left. Say hey, it's almost time. That would be great. Um, so the edtech tools that I'm gonna uh, focus on here, it um, it it is flip, and I do use Google Classroom a lot, be and I use a one to one Chromebook device. So the most valuable thing in your toolkit is having a routine, a solid routine. And so with that, I have all my students with, um, I teach them all how to independent, independently log into their device. And this is a hard task, but once this is set, like um, I set them up so that they can work uh, independently w uh, w without having to ask me for help. I mean, they can, but I want them to be uh, independent. One thing that I do that really helps me is that our school is a PBIS school. We are platinum. And so I, I hand out these respect for uh, every level of success when I first teach them their, uh, when I first teach them technology and we use this throughout the whole day and, it, and it's really good. And with that said, um, in my small group, I have them as small as 10, as, long, as large as 14, and um, I service them every day. And sometimes when I need help, I find a, a student uh, uh, expert or a student, a student leader to help me uh, facilitate that. And that works great because there's only one of me, but if I can, if I can multiply myself, then then we all learn together in the classroom. And I love using Google Classroom because Google Classroom allows me to put, to put direct links so the students don't have to guess. And, and um, I, can, I can maximize the, the use of my time with that. And so my tool of preference is Flip. It's a formerly Flipgrid. And it's to empower every learner in my class. So um, I just love using it. And with that, I think the key for Flip is all in the camera. There's tons of things that you can do. And the very first thing I would do is to start simple so that the students can buy into it. And with that, I'll give you an example. And this example was performed by a first grader and this was during remote learning. So all of this, she learned through a computer screen and she did not speak English. Hello, my name is Gia. Today we learn color. This is my story. This is Gia, this is Anna. And Anna said, what color you like? And Gia said, I like blue. 
So that's one Bye. example. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And I hope you're all able to hear. If not, can you please unmute and say I couldn't hear it? Okay, I will <laughs> go on. Good, so, Brian. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. See, I'm not used to the chat. I am. Uh, okay. Thank you. So you have to start simple. And here, I was just having them retell what they did. Hello, my. And then, and then, my favorite thing that I like to do when I start a new t a new topic or when I teach tech uh, tech, um, I don't use it for academics when we first start. I try to have them. Um, try to have them buy in with something non-academic so that they can enjoy the entire learning process. So because once that's set, then uh, then you can you can add in the academics of, uh, um, on top of that. But the one thing that I love to talk about is food. I always talk about food. So with that, I'll have my student tell you what she had for lunch, I believe. Hello, my name is Lisa, I'm eight break with a for lunch and drink water for with eat sandwich and egg for lunch and was at home. Now, the one thing I've learned with multilingual learners is that they are good at writing things down. They are good, that means they excel at doing worksheets, well, most, and they can do all of that. But when I say, can you read it back to me? That's where there is a roadblock. And I think that's the key. And that's why I love to use Flip because now you have to show me what you did, but you also have to speak it. You have to say it. And here I can see it all and, and it's all, uh, it's all captured on video, which is fantastic. And and then um, I can use this example uh, as uh, as a whole class example because students learn best from others from others, like not not necessarily me. So that's that's one that's one key tool. Uh, the one thing that I do, I set expectations for every video that we make. Now this picture is outdated because they keep changing all the cool tools so i will have to uh, update this but as a class we all decided okay uh, we're gonna have three expectations for every single video so one was a frame now they don't have those anymore which is so sad but and then two was a it was a title so that we know what what specifically we are talking about and then three was a sticker so it's fun so then you you have to teach all of those and, um, independently so that the students can create create the video and then um, and then I turn around and we, and we all um, we all hold each other accountable uh, that we followed those expectations and with that I think we just flip everything in our classroom and flip has a flip has a hashtag um, if you can think it you uh, you can flip it so and then with that in mind, so we flipped our workbook and like I said, um, multilingual learners, they can do this like, like really fast and to the point where, the, where they get ahead of me. But the, um, where, where I told them to stop and focus is that, is that now you have to read the entire lesson back to me um, so that I can, can um, assess you and see how you're doing. So with that, I'll start with my very first, um, with my very first uh, lesson one example. Hello, my name is Hannah. And today, so it will be So I'm gonna pause it there. So this student learned, learned from home, did not know English. And so everything he learned here was through a computer screen. And so, um, and it's kind of hard, um, hard to hear. So with that, with, um, with me watching this, I knew how to help him when he came back in, into the classroom for hybrid learning. So in my classroom, I have a, um, a USB headphone and mic for every student 
they're a little bit pricey, but it's worth it. I was able to take, I was able to get a grant for this, but it's it's totally worth it because now they can express themselves and I'll and I'll let you hear it. Hello, my name is Hal and today lesson fifty five in my story. Number one, top, hot, lock. Number two, skit. So with with um with the example ex with the with the video example from lesson one to the video example for lesson fifty five, you can see how the child how the child progressed, and how his speech. Um, how his speech improved, and um, with those uh, the the headset was a really valuable tool, and and I really loved it. So this is my friend from the very first example, and let's see how she is. Hello, my name is Fia. Today, my learn lesson simple solution and twenty five, and I just got ready to this. <laughs> And today I read lesson five. Is this book? And today I learned lesson twenty-four. So today I learned twenty-five. Yeah, okay. And the first lesson is first number one is this is the word. And in hand, I'll run with the picture that you see. But I do not see the picture. So as you can tell from, from her being at home um, and until her being at school, her, her, level, of, her level of English just skyrocketed. And, um, and um, she just got reclassified this past year, this past um, fall. And it's, it's just, it's amazing to have video video documentation of the progress of a multilingual learner. And it's just like, wow, it's just, it's very powerful. Uh, from that, uh, Flip has a feature where you could do book reports. And with those book reports, um, you can do, sorry, not book reports, with that you could record your screen. So in this example, I did a, well, we had a book report as a class project. And since this student is at home, I wanted him to record himself. And I taught him all of this remotely, um, step by step. And like I, like I said, when, when we first started, there was zero English or very limited English to the point where, where we could say this. Hello, my name is Alka. Today, we are on this Zen Manu Min Okay, to A, he was born in New York City. To B, his famous musical is called Hamilton. To C, he is Hamilton. So that's an example of the, of the students being able to record the screen and to share to share what they know and it's it's a really powerful tool and i really enjoy using this and i like i like i said i have a i have a time capsule of all of these videos which is fantastic and and speaking of time capsules so during my time during remote learning uh with my newcomers which speak um either zero english or very or very limited english we spoke about everything and we recorded everything and, and as you can see here we had over 3,000 responses of just them and um so like we did our simple simple solutions i think it had 72 lessons and they recorded 70 70 72 lessons for each one i mean for uh, each student recorded one um one of those and then then we had our 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 I'm sorry, we had our ELA content and and we had other content as well. But the key for this project was to practice um, oral language every single day. And we really, really did a great job. And with that, um, I have a 
flip resource. Um, there is a PDF here if you would like. If you click on this on this uh, screen, you can you can view the resource and it will help you um, get started with with Flip if you are not familiar with it. And then um, if you enjoyed this, I uh, I go more in depth, like up to one hour um, on this presentation here. Uh, welcome to welcome to EdTech. It's been waiting for you in in, in ESL, ELL, and SPED. I will be be presenting at Spring Q once more. And I will be I, I will also be presenting at the at, at uh, ISD in Philadelphia this summer. Um, so this part here, it's for the breakout part. So you can try try the camera. There are videos on there as well that that explain what I do. And I'm not sure of my time right now. So if someone can tell me how much time I have, maybe I can just zip through what I have Brian. on the part. We're doing great. Um, we've got about eight minutes left, and we do have a question in the chat. Um, All right, I love questions, and I love that I have eight minutes left. Okay, go. <laughs> so, Mackenzie, ask me the question. Sure, I can. Uh, Mackenzie says, "Thank you so much for sharing. How did you manage your time listening to the students and giving feedback?" Okay, so that we took time during class. I would randomly pick some. Like I would pick five. I would I would pick six, and we and we picked five. So for the majority of the time, I did it during class time because because I wanted them to hear uh, to hear each other and tend to see how they spoke. Now, now, one thing that we all learned during that time is when we were discussing our um, our workbook, uh, we had a couple of students say, like, this is star, this is triangle, this is circle, this is turtle. And I said, well, that's not how we how we naturally talk, but they couldn't have seen that or they couldn't have, have, have caught that uh, without the video because once I pointed that out, like every single video from that was like, oh, look, number one, star, triangle, circle. And so from, from just that, that small little tweak that, that we sat and we, and, we, and we watched it, then that, that um, helped us improve our, um, our spoken English. And then, of course, uh, I would keep tr uh, keep track of them, and whenever I had a chance, I would just see how they were doing. And from lesson one to lesson seventy two, it's a tremendous jump. Thank you for that question. Is there another question? Let me see. Here's my chat. Yes, um, I had yeah, just like just constant use of the English language every single day. I mean, I mean, to this day, my language is gone by the end of the day because I have to change personalities from different grade levels and different amounts of energy and just to, and all of these things. But I saw that this was a very great use of my time and because of all of these students, they haven't reclassified yet, but they, they, just, they just jumped like a year or two ahead in where they would have been during the regular school year. And then if there's not another question, I just want to show you what I have on my other page, which I can't find, of course, because we're on the spot. <laughs> Brian, okay, so, have you ever used yes. um, flip responses for exit tickets? Yes, yes. So as I build the as I build the tech, I would have them say, what was your favorite thing from today? Pick one thing. And then they would have to say, my favorite thing is blank. And what I like to do, I like to give them, I, I like to give them the choice that whether whether they want to speak it or whether they want to write and then speak it. And what they learn is that sometimes it's it's hard to record it the first time without writing it down. So like even those those students that don't like to write, they they um, they end up writing because they don't know what to say when they have to film themselves. Great. That's a great question. We do have another, actually two questions that are pretty similar. I love it. One is, uh, do you showcase these videos with families? And then uh, Peggy asked, uh, they're just sharing their videos with the teacher, right? Not open to other students or parents. The, it, 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 it's open to the classroom. So whoever is in, is, is in the classroom can see it. Technically, you can share with anyone in the school because that's how the link is set up. 
but we're not, I don't have to worry about that yet. Um, and then the other question was, do I share it with families? I don't share with families yet, but I have sh shared it at a um, at like a parent teacher meeting when I team up with the with their homeroom teacher and I talk to to them and I show them what they have been doing, uh, what they have been doing in my class. I also share this with teachers when I have them say, well, well, student X doesn't speak, um, does not speak in my class. I'm like, well, look, I have proof. They do speak. And I, and I said, but maybe they're just shy or they don't know how, or they claim they don't know how, but I do share it that way. Um, and then I did, did I hit those questions? I think so. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Is there a setting so the videos are only seen by the teacher and not the entire class? Yes, there is a setting. Would you do I have time to show you now? Yes, you we're go. right about okay. three minutes. So that's perfect. So this is my example one that you guys can participate in. It's on the last slide. So you can click here or scan this or click. There's a different ways to access it. And once you're there, See, um, so this is, you can set it up. You go to edit topic and then I believe, and then more in the settings because they keep changing everything. There is a spot where, here it is right here. So if I click this, um, if I click this and, I, and then I click update topic and if, I, and if I want that to happen to every topic I put, I, 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 would, I, I would click here, right? But if I do it for this for now, if you add a response, it will not show up on the on here. I mean, I can see it, but nobody else can see it unless I unless I make it visible. So if there's a if there's a class that 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 they're shy and they don't want to show it, you could you could still do it. You just need to make sure that it says moderated, and when the students see it. They won't see um, other student videos and they won't know if they submitted one because they'll be like, well, I turned it in, but I don't see it. And I believe with the newest updates that might have changed where they can see their um, only their own that they have submitted to you within your within your topic. I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think so. But Brian, we have one other question. Can we just set one single video response to be visible if you wanted to share one? Yeah, you can. Uh, there are, there's also, uh, yeah, there's different ways. So like for this one, you go to the settings and then you can you can go to the to the moderate. And once you're there, hold on, cancel. Uh, if oh, I have so many, uh, you can click here. You can click on the dots. So the dots don't want to work with me, but there is a way to hide the response uh, if it's already there or the response um, active so you can see it. So I believe if the responses are not active because because this is moderated, you can uh, you can you can make it visible. And yes, that should work. Great. Well, um, right. I think we are going to have some time to play in some breakout rooms with uh, both of our uh, wonderful presenters. So Jenna is going to introduce us to our breakout room um, options. Yes, and before we do this, let's give Brian and Eric a big, huge round of applause or silent applause if you're on mute. We, you can do a silent applause just like this. That was fabulous. I mean, these are such great ways or strategies for our multilingual learners, audio and video. So now it's your turn to choose a tool that you want to dig deeper in. And both of them did such an amazing job curating their resources in, in a Google Doc and a Wakelet. So this is your chance for you to do a deep dive. 